deeply excited. Our guest is going to is Joe Stone, and let me just give you a little bit of background on who Joe Stone is. Joe Stone's always been an avid outdoor enthusiast. Flying, biking, and hiking in the mountains is what Joe lived for. On August 13, 2010, all of this came crashing down when Joe had a speed flying accident in Missoula, Montana. This accident rendered him an incomplete C7 quadriplegic. Not willing to let this newly acquired disability slow him down, Joe has been on a mission to not only get his own life back, but he's working to inspire others along the way. He is now a motivational speaker, filmmaker, quadriplegic adventurer, and a founder of the Joe Stone Foundation. His goal is to help people push beyond the boundaries of perceived limitations and show that we can find a higher quality of life no matter our situation. And I really think that Joe epitomizes the goal of Path to Awesome, of breaking through barriers and, and doing things that really, you know, forget about your limitations. And so I'm really excited. Welcome, Joe. I'm glad to have you here. Oh, thanks. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to be a part of it. So, Joe, one of the things I always like to ask people first is is what maybe isn't in your bio that I just read. Tell me something else that, that we don't know about you. Um, let's see. Um, I mean, there's a lot not in that bio about who I am. Um, you know, I, I've, I've got a great life going for me right now. I've got a beautiful fiance, Amy Rosendahl, who's um, – we were together from before the accident, and she stuck by my side 100% through all of this and supported me through all the ups and downs that come with something like this. Um, Got a couple dogs as well. Henry is my, uh, he's a pit bull chocolate lab mix who's, I'm training him as a service dog to help me out in the, on the trails in the mountains and that kind of thing. We got a little naughty beagle as well who's, uh, he's about almost 11 years old now and um, yeah, you know, that's kind of like the, the family life side of what I'm doing and, um, and then beyond that, you know, it's just um, from the accident there, you know, it was more than just getting back to physical outdoor recreation, things like that. There was a whole side of what am I going to do with my life as far as career and things like that? So I've, you know, it's really, um, it, it's it's forcing me to have to kind of rethink how I'm living my life. Nice, absolutely. Well, I I think one of the the biggest things that I kind of want to start with, and it was something that I didn't really know, and I had to look up. Can you tell us a little bit what speed flying is? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's um a very frequent question. In fact, there's only probably been. I've told thousands of people about my story, and there's probably only been two people that actually knew what it was. Um, speed flying is essentially flying a small skydiving parachute off of mountains. So uh, if you're familiar with paragliding, you hike to the top of a mountain, you lay the parachute out behind you, and when you start running, it'll inflate and come over the top of your head. And uh, as you continue to run, you'll take flight that way. So you never have any free fall or anything like that like you do with skydiving. Um, the difference, though, is, is speed flying is really fast, where paragliding is really slow. Paragliding, you're trying to climb altitude and fly as long as possible. Speed flying, you're flying as fast as possible, and that's it. So um, for me, it was about flying close to the ground and, and uh, you know, kind of buzzing the earth on the way down. So that, that's kind of the, the quick of what speed flying is all about. Okay, interesting. And it was when I looked it up, you know, the only videos I found were people doing it on skis. Uh, so I didn't, I wasn't really, that's one of the reasons I wanted to ask because I, I didn't think that you were on skis when you had, when you had, had your accident. Yeah, there's there's two types of speed. There's speed flying and there's speed riding. And basically, okay. that's the difference of foot launching versus launching on skis. And so I was doing it in the summertime, um, so skis don't really make sense then. So I was doing it uh, on, just on foot. In the, it was in August of, uh, of 2010. So And just right here in Missoula on, on Mount Jumbo, right on the outskirts of the city. Wow. And so tell me, if you don't mind, tell me a little bit about the accident and kind of how it came about and what happened. Yeah, so um, unfortunately I don't remember all of this, which is kind of crazy. My memory, my accident happened at about 8 in the evening, and my memory stops at probably 9 or 10 in the morning earlier that day. So I don't remember my whole work day. I don't remember anything. Um, but I did, this was my fourth flight of that evening, um, and I met, I was flying alone that day, and met some people on the mountain as I was just hiking up and down, and um I, I took my last fly of the evenings right at sunset and was about uh, 300 feet in the air, probably, give or take, and was doing a maneuver called a loop. So you go, if this was my parachute and this was me hanging below it, you go almost completely over top of it. And I'm not sure what went wrong, but I must have done something wrong or some winds came in or something, and it tangled up my parachute, which sent me spiraling down probably at about 50 or 60 miles an hour until I crashed on the side of the mountain right on my back. So from there, I broke eight vertebrae throughout my neck and back. Um, had four broken ribs. I had a laceration in my liver. 
I badly bruised both of my lungs to the point to where that was actually what they were most concerned with my survival was uh, my lungs. So they collapsed my right lung um, to let that heal. And then I was on a ventilator as well, but them pumping 100% oxygen into me, I was only able to absorb about 51% of what I actually needed to survive. So there was a big risk of brain damage, that kind of thing. Um, but then on top of all of that, I also had spinal cord damage on the lowest vertebrae in my neck, which has diagnosed me as an incomplete C7 quadriplegic. Um, so that's kind of the, the quick and dirty of what, what happened to me that day.